I got a question for you. If you're a content creator, videographer, photographer, you're stuck in that three to 5,000 a month range, but you see other extremely talented or even just as talented as you, creators, production companies, agencies, et cetera, charging way more than you and you're wondering why, there's actually a reason. And the reason is what I call the gap. And there's something standing in the gap between the freelancer, which would be you, versus the production companies that are charging a whole lot more or just other creators, uh, maybe even equally as talented or less talented than you, they're charging a whole lot more. And what stands in the gap is really what matters. So my name's Nash, I'm a brand and resort photographer, I've been doing it for the last four years, and now I'm helping content creators like you build and scale their business to 10 to 15 and beyond using a process I call precision prospecting, and that's what we're gonna be going over in this video as well. Um, but if you're interested and you're just ready to start scaling and you wanna jump on a call and say, hey, I'm, I'm all in, let's do this, then go ahead and check out the link in the description below because I got a link to book a call with either myself or a member of our team, and uh, we'll, we'll see if you're a good fit for the pay to create program. Program. And if so, we can help you scale to that 10 to 15 and even beyond working for only the clients you want to work with and getting the budgets that you deserve to get paid. Uh, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this video. So on this end of the spectrum, we have freelancers. And this is when you are taking on pretty much any client you can get, charging not as much as you know you probably should and feeling burnt out and just tired, right? And on this end, you have production companies. These are the ones that are charging 50, 75, 100, even more per day for production shoots. And the question is, how come people like this, the freelancers that are really talented, have exceptional content, how come they're stuck charging this rate, the $1 sign, while production companies, agencies, even other professional content creators are charging five to 10, sometimes even more times the price that these guys are charging? And the answer lies in the gap. So I'm gonna tell you a quick story about myself. I came from the production world. I worked on movies, TV shows, commercials, etc., And I saw the types of budgets that these shows and commercials would have. It was not uncommon, again, to have a $100,000 per day shoot. That was not uncommon. In fact, I worked on several of them. Now, the entire budget didn't necessarily go to one person. You know, it was split over different crew, props, location permits, etc. But they're big time productions. And the final output, though, was not much better than what I could have produced. So someone's spending $100,000 on this commercial. I was like, I could have made this much better, actually, for like 10K. So I'll get into that right now in terms of why I couldn't even charge 10K, because in fact, I was charging about $1,000 a video. So I was like, what's the difference? How do I bridge this gap? How do I go from freelancer to charging what these production companies are charging? So I was like, okay, the first thing that comes to mind is maybe my gear. Maybe my gear just isn't good enough. So I started upgrading. I spent tens of thousands of dollars on new cameras, new lenses, new drones, new gimbals, like all the stuff, right? And at one point, I actually had my entire camera bag stolen. And luckily, I didn't have all my gear in there. But I lost thousands of dollars a year because I didn't have the right insurance. And it got to the point where I was like, well, I've upgraded my gear, but I haven't really upgraded the amount that I've charged. And I even rented Reds at one point, um, you know, upgraded to the highest level of Sony. And I don't even own Reds now. I, I own a Sony a7S III that I do for my video work. But I had high-end gear similar to what these guys had, but I was charging nowhere near this amount. So I was like, okay, so what's the problem? Well, it's not gear. Well, maybe it's my skills. Maybe my skills aren't good enough. So I started joining more productions, doing sunrise and sunset shoots, building out my portfolio for all kinds of different things and like for brands and for resorts and for travel and, and all this kind of stuff. I was building out this portfolio and I was like, well, maybe my skills aren't good enough. So I need to upgrade these skills to be on par with these people. But then, like I said, I saw the final product that these guys made and I was like, man, my skills are actually better. And not, I'm not saying that to brag at all, but I feel like my skills are actually better than these people, but I'm still stuck charging, you know, one to $2 sign kind of, kind of rates. So I was like, okay, so it's not the skills. Maybe it's my website. So I went down this rabbit hole of like three weeks of just finding the perfect Squarespace template and, you know, having these animations and all kinds of like fancy design tricks and stuff on my website. Cause I wanted to make it the slickest website in the game. And I would show people and they'd be like, oh, this website is sick. Like you did a great job, whatever. But guess what? Zero people actually found my website off of Google, number one. Number two, the people that I sent the link to, half of them didn't even look at it. And the ones that did look at it, I'm sure my website was not the deciding factor in terms of them actually booking with me. So the website was really kind of a waste of time. Not saying that you don't need a website because it does help if you 
format it as a sales asset, but most people don't format it as a sales asset. It's more of just a portfolio piece. And at that point, it doesn't really help you that much. So it wasn't my website. So then I was like, well, maybe it's my followers. Maybe I don't have enough followers. At When I started, I had like, you know, less than 10,000. So I started joining DM groups and engagement pods and doing giveaways, right? To kind of try to grow my following. At one point I got to 50K and then 100K. Now I'm at like 116 or something. And I've, I've since realized that followers don't necessarily equal money, right? Because I hit 50,000 followers and I really was not charging more or significantly more than I was before. And the other thing I realized is that most of these production companies and agencies don't really have that many followers themselves. So it must not be about the followers either. So maybe it was just a magic script that these guys had. Maybe they just had the magic words that just hit the client just right so that they could actually be convinced to buy from them. So I started buying courses and eBooks and all this kind of stuff to figure out the exact script. And I would copy and paste and blast it out to a bunch of people. And guess what? The responses I got are probably very similar to what you're getting, which is either thanks, we're not interested. We can offer you a free product or a free exchange or a free stay or a collab post or something like that. Or we don't have the budget, especially when I would try to pitch a higher budget project, which still wasn't even close to this, but, you know, higher than a thousand dollar budget. They'd be like, yeah, we don't have the budget for it. And you're probably stuck in this situation where you're in this gap as well. And you've maybe tried all of these things and you're still getting answers like this. And it's like, well, what the heck? What's what's the issue? Obviously, it's not all these things because I tried to optimize all those and you probably tried to optimize them as well. And you're still getting answers like this. So there must be something different. So what actually stands in this gap? Well, I started to kind of study these guys and, and like, how do they position themselves? How do they message themselves, et cetera, to be able to, uh, to get in front of the clients and also convince them to, to buy from them, right? And all this stuff has to be dialed in. I'm not saying this stuff isn't important, but chances are, if you're watching this video, then you're probably at a point where, you know, your, your website, your gear, your skills, your followers, maybe, maybe not followers, but, um, you know, at least your website, your skills and your gear are all on point. So you have the ability to create high quality content. You just need to get to the point where you can actually charge real money for it. So I was like, well, what stands in the gap? I realized it's this concept of high end positioning. See, cause there's a difference between me over here, charging the $1 sign versus the productions that are charging, you know, hundred grand for a shoot. Right. And that is exclusively in high end positioning. So let me explain to you exactly what I mean by that using a, a visual example. Why can some brands charge a premium for a similar service? Or in this case, we'll say a similar product. So as an example, we have movement watches over here, which you may or may not be familiar with, but they're a big brand on Instagram, uh, work with a lot of influencers and they're, they're kind of like a lifestyle watch brand, right? So there's these guys. And then I found a very similar watch, not exactly the same, but it's made out of the same material and it's, it's, most of the specs are exactly the same. Found the same exact watch for $7. Okay, now granted, this is a bulk price. Um, so this is this is for wholesalers, right? But, you know, let's just say that it's $7. Exact same watch, almost exactly the same. Same build quality, same materials, same, same everything, right? Why can these guys charge $180 and these guys only charge $770? Well, it comes into that high-end positioning. In fact, these guys are actually charging a 23X markup from whatever the wholesale rate is. So again, what stands in the gap and why can these guys charge 23X what these guys are charging? Why can some production companies charge 23 times or 10 times or five times what you're charging? And the answer to that stands in high end position, but also perceived value. See, because what movement is selling is not the ability to tell time, okay? If they're selling the ability to tell time, everyone's got an iPhone. They can just look at what time it is. It's really not that big of a deal, okay? Or they could go buy this watch for seven bucks if, if really their value proposition was to, to tell time, but it's not. Their value proposition is that when you buy this product, you have a perceived status, a perceived value to your friend group or to the people on your social media that you can say, hey, I'm wearing the same watch that Sam Kohler wears or the same watch that Jay Alvarez wears or whatever, right? And you can say that I spent $180 on this watch and maybe your friends don't have it and they're actually stoked to see that you have it or they're jealous or whatever, right? It's a status play. It's not a telling time play. Telling time is is inconsequential. It's the status you get by by buying this. Now, when we go to the gap, again, we wanna create perceived value. So is this watch technically worth $180? No, absolutely not. But a lot of people believe it's worth $180 because of the perceived status they get as a result of buying it. So in the same way, if we result, if we uh, 
kind of compare this to freelancer versus production companies and creating perceived value, what most freelancers are doing is they're making their service, their photos, videos, reels, whatever it might be, a commodity. Literally, like there's so many creators that can do that. It's not a unique selling feature that you can take pictures of a room or that you can take lifestyle photography or whatever. It's, it's not a unique feature because there are so many people that can do it. Again, in this case, right, a watch is not really a unique feature. This style of watch even is not really that unique because this is very similar. So it must be something else, right? So most freelancers are also not solving a need. They're going in saying, I can take pictures, videos, whatever, which is the same concept of movement going in and saying, hey, this watch can help you tell time. Okay, cool. That doesn't really solve a need because there's a bunch of ways that I can tell time. That's probably the reason that you're getting uh, the types of answers from brands where they're like, oh, we already got our, our image library is filled. We, we're already good, you know? And because it doesn't solve a need, it doesn't solve a problem because you don't expose a problem. So again, if movement was trying to solve the problem of not being able to tell time, that's not a real problem to solve because it's it's really not a problem. Like you can solve that real easy by using your phone. Or if you want to wear a watch, you can pay $7. So the problem they're actually solving, okay, the problem these guys are actually solving is again, a status problem that you feel better about yourself once you wear this watch. That's the real problem that they're actually solving. It's not like, hey, you can tell time better. So, but what most people say is like, hey, I can just make better content for you. Okay, well, that doesn't really do much for me because I can I can find anyone to do that. I can find a lot of people to do that. And ultimately, there's just a lot of options. There's there's a lot of people that can do this type of work. So therefore, why should I go with you? So when we pump in perceived value in this gap, then it's a tailored solution specific to the brand. Okay, it's not a copy paste solution. It's specific to the brand. It's an absolute necessity. Okay, movement sells this as an absolute necessity. Like, you, if you don't have this, then you're losing out. It's a FOMO play, right? Um, it solves a painful problem. People feeling like they're losing out is a painful problem. People feeling like they're, uh, you know, not at a status they want to be at is a painful problem, and they will pay money to be able to get to a certain status level, okay? Brands feeling like they're losing out on money because they're doing certain marketing tactics is a painful problem, right? But most people don't pitch it that way. That's that's what these guys pitch. And also, it's a one-of-one -one solution. So instead of lots of options of freelancers, like you can find 100, just go on Instagram and find 100, 100 solid photographers that could do some work for you. This is a one-of-one -one solution. It's the, this production company is literally the only company that can get you this type of solution and this type of results. And they pitch it that way, right? That's how you create perceived value. So then the question becomes, okay, so, so tangibly, how does this look? Well, this is the three secrets that the big guys use to land consistent high ticket clients. And by big guys, I mean like the agencies and production companies, okay? So number one is precision prospecting. So this is how you can confidently pitch your service to stand out from the competition using the same techniques that the big production studios and agencies use. If we go back to here, okay, the market for this is very different than the market for this. Well, let's, let's just say this is retail. I know this is for wholesale, but let's just say it's retail. This watch is just for anybody that needs to tell time, just needs a watch, something cheap that they can just wear. Okay, that's the market here. The market here is people that, first of all, value their appearance, value how their appearance makes them feel, and want to be part of a movement. That's why the, the, the company is called Movement. They want to be part of a, a culture and a movement, right? That's why they're willing to pay that $180 just to get this little logo here, okay? And that's why people are willing to pay exponentially more to get a little Nike sign on their clothes versus just buying generic from, from Walmart or whatever, right? That's, it's that perceived status you get, okay? So that's what precision prospecting is, is how do you find the brands that you can actually show the types of value that you actually can offer, right? How do you stand against the competition where everyone else is pitching the same thing? How do you stand out from that competition? That's what precision prospecting is. The second one is magnetic messaging. So how can you leverage persuasion techniques to do most of the selling for you before you ever get on a call? Let's go back to this example, okay? The reason they can charge so much more is because most of movement selling is not happening on their website. People are going to their website and they're already sold on buying a movement watch. There's a reason that they are trying to buy that and it's because they saw people wearing it before. They, again, maybe they saw their friends wearing it. Maybe they just like the way it looks and they've seen it on social media and they've seen ads and they've seen all this kind of different stuff before 
and they're actually sold on buying movement versus literally any other watch before they even make it to the page. It's not like this page is trying to convince them to buy movement. Once they're on the page, it's just which watch do you want, right? Whereas you go to some of these other watch websites, or let's just say this one, okay? This is a commodity. You got whatever, five different versions right here. And a lot of brands have something very similar to this. So then it becomes a pricing war. It's like, okay, so they're charging 770. This guy's charging 690. I can, I can save a dollar by doing this. So I may as well go with the guy that's cheaper. And that's how so many creators kind of run their business, right? Because because they're a commodity and because they haven't pre-sold their client to want them and know the value that they have, then all of a sudden they get on a sales call and they're shocked when they hear, oh, it's too expensive. We saw this other guy. He's willing to do it for like half the price. And then they go with him because you haven't sold them on the value. Okay. It's that perceived value. And you do that through magnetic messaging, through honing in that message. So people are pre-sold to buy before they ever get on a call with you. And then lastly is premium pricing. So the reasons or why are some creators able to charge five times, 10 times, even 23 times the price, even though they're just as skilled as creative. Okay. Look at this. Why are they able to charge 23 times the rate of this? Like, honestly, if you look at this, you see it's $7, you're like, oh, that's probably a cheap watch. It's probably not any good. It's probably going to break in a week, right? Same materials, same quality, $180. You look at that and you're like, wow, that's a really high quality watch. Same thing. It's just a different price. So therefore, you feel like it has more value to it, which is interesting because most creators compete on price again, right? Because they don't actually understand their value and they think if they do a cheaper price, then the client will want to go with them. But here's what you have to understand is, especially higher end clients actually are going to value somebody who charges more because they're gonna perceive it as a higher quality product. So if you go in, a, a company is expecting to pay say $20,000 for a project and you come in pitching three, they're gonna be like, well, they obviously don't know what they're doing. That, why is that so cheap? That doesn't make any sense to us. It obviously must not be good. It's like this watch. So therefore we'll go with somebody and I, I know we're gonna pay a lot more, but I feel like we'll have a better chance of getting results, right? You buy this $7 watch, you can't flex on anybody with a $7 watch. But with this, you can, you can flex on people. Same watch, but the fact that it has this little logo is why you can flex on somebody, okay? And that's ultimately what the three secrets are that the big guys use to be able to charge high rates. Now, looking into tangibly what that looks like, this is the precision prospecting funnel. So most courses and gurus, whatever, are gonna teach this stuff like cold email and cold messaging, and they're gonna say, send out this to a thousand people. And to be honest, that's that's gonna work. Like you're gonna get responses if you send out a thousand, like you're bound to get like one or two clients. It's just a numbers game at that point. But I can guarantee you that it's probably not the clients you want. And it's also not the rate that you want. It's, it's just true because you're not actually solving a problem. So what I do is not that. I don't see a reason to start there because if you start there, you're just copy and pasting and sending out. So what we have to do is actually start with why is this why is this offer valuable? Is it that we're just creating pictures or are we actually solving a problem? Is it just that this watch tells time or is it doing something much deeper and much better for the client that buys this? Next, we go into expert positioning. Why are you the only person that is qualified to be able to do this? Why are you the only person that can get this result? Why is movement the only watch that some people want to buy? They don't even care about the rest of the watches because that's all they want to buy. There's a reason and it comes down to branding and that perceived value, right? Goes into branding. Why are people willing to pay $180 for movement, but they might not even be willing to pay $7 for this other, this other watch? Well, because movement has aligned itself with certain values and certain people and certain just, just values in its company that people associate that with the brand. And therefore, if they associate themselves with the brand, then, you know, they have the status that they want, right? High-end branding, then clear messaging. How do you actually target the exact people that you want to talk to? How do you speak their language? How do you resonate with them? So if you don't understand all this stuff, then there's no way that you're gonna succeed with this. So that's why you have to start right here. And it all comes down to branding. How do you brand yourself and how do you position yourself for the clients that can actually afford you? So if you find yourself stuck in that, like maybe three to 5,000 a month, you're spinning your wheels, way too many clients, no time, uh, not making enough per client and just feeling burnt out, then check out the link in the description below, book in a call with myself or a member of my team. And we'll see if you're a fit for the pay to create program where I show you how to build out exactly this, this entire funnel here so that you can spend less time on the tire kicker clients, 
charge a lot more to the clients you actually want to work with you, get them to be stoked to say yes to you, and ultimately build a business that you don't need a break from. Uh, that's really what I do. So if you're interested, again, I got the link in the description below you can check out. Other than that, if you like this video, if you got any kind of value, give it a thumbs up and check out the rest of my channel. I got a bunch of videos of more practical stuff, how to build out some of these things. So definitely subscribe to the channel, check out the rest of those. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you in the next one.